Well, Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back to the Clean Energy Edge. If you've been with us through December, you know we spent the last month breaking down what's actually going wrong with the U.S. electricity system. Rising costs, exploding demand, grid bottlenecks, and why the traditional answers everyone defaults to, uh, they just don't line up with the reality we're facing today. We're in January now, and January is going to be a little different. So December was about diagnosing the problem. January is about solutions. And we're going to start with the big picture. Why clean energy still makes sense in 2026 and beyond. Not as an ideology, not as a talking point, but as a practical response to the math of the grid. Hey, but before we break this down, take a second, click that like, subscribe, and the alert bell, which supports us, and it's absolutely free to you. Now let's get into this. And here's the reality we laid out in December. Electricity demand is growing faster than at any point in modern history, driven by AI, data centers, electrification, population growth, and extreme weather. At the same time, electricity supply is not keeping up. Not because we don't know how to build power plants, but because the things people keep pointing to as solutions take too long, they cost too much, and they don't match how the grid actually behaves anymore. We talked about fossil fuel plants that take a decade to build, nuclear projects that take multiple decades and tens of billions of dollars, interconnection queues that are jammed for years, and transmission lines that need 7 to 12 years just to move electrons from point A to point B. Meanwhile, electricity prices are rising right now. Reliability risk is rising right now. And households and businesses are already paying for it. That's the backdrop for this conversation. Here's the part that often gets lost. Clean energy doesn't win because it's green. It wins because it shows up on the right timeline. Solar, battery storage, uh, distributed generation, and microgrids can be deployed in months to a few years, not decades. They're modular. They scale fast. They can be built where the power is actually being used. And that matters because today's grid problem isn't baseload. It's peaks, volatility, and flexibility. Heat waves, cold snaps, evening ramps, massive AI workloads that turn on overnight. Centralized fuel-based power plants were built for a world that looked nothing like this one. Traditional power generation is slow to build, expensive to operate, and increasingly fragile during extreme conditions. And this is exactly why execution matters, not just talking about the problem. And speaking of actual project execution, I want to thank today's sponsor, NextGen Clean Energy Solutions. NextGen works with cities, schools, and companies to design and execute clean energy projects, everything from solar and battery storage to EV charging and resilient solutions. What makes them different is they handle the full process, strategy, project management, and financing, so organizations can actually move forward instead of getting stuck into studies and delays. This isn't theory. This is real-world deployment happening right now. If you want to learn more about what NextGen is building, you'll find a link in the description. So clean energy, it flips the old school model of power generation to the reality of how electricity is actually needed today. It reduces dependence on long distance transmission. It reduces exposure to fuel price volatility. It gives customers control over cost and reliability instead of waiting on utilities and regulators. Once it's built, the economics get boring and boring is exactly what you want when you're talking about energy bills. This isn't a future scenario. Utilities are already leaning on solar and storage because they're the fastest tools available. Businesses are installing behind the meter systems to hedge against rising rates. Data centers are exploring on-site generation because the grid, it simply can't keep up. The question isn't whether clean energy can work. The question is whether we're willing to stop pretending that slower, more expensive options will magically arrive in time to save us. I mean, the math, it just doesn't support that hope. So here's what we're doing this month. Each episode in January will take one of the problems we exposed in December, whether it be rising cost, reliability fears, AI-driven demand, interconnection delays, transmission bottlenecks, and we'll break that down into how clean energy actually solves those problems. Not in abstract terms, not in political language, but in real world, deployable, economically grounded ways. Because the future of affordable, reliable electricity isn't about waiting for the grid to catch up. 
It's about how much power you can generate, store, and control yourself. If that sounds like a conversation worth having, hit subscribe, turn on alerts, and stick with us. We'll catch you next time.